Well, here is my tree frog that just keeps coming back. This guy is in this shop every night, all the time. He's either on my ladder, on my workbench, hanging on the wall. It's kind of neat, these tree frogs, they change colors. He doesn't seem to give a crap about nothing. Not about nothing. Yeah, he doesn't care. I walk up to him, he's so used to me out here, he just <laughs> doesn't seem to care. You know, I think, I think it would be fitting. I'm going to name him Thomas Russell. That's what I'm going to do. I think that's a perfect name for him. Just look at him there. Some kind of a swamp creature hanging out on my workbench. Eating the bugs, being just an all-around good guy. I like that tree frog. So anyway, I explained this before and the extension cord plugged in, I'm pretty sure it's quite clear that's a very temporary thing. We're actually going to build a control box for this thing out of some stuff I have kicking around. And that's kind of what we're up to. At least get it going, get it mounted tonight, figure out where it's going. And basically, I had this box, this is off of the same burner that that blower came off of. This would have been the control box. Decent bracket for something. And it's perfect for a control setup. So what we'll do is we'll mount this on the wall somewhere. Not too far away from the forge. And we will... Uh... Oh, what the hell am I trying to say? We'll get it mounted, get it wired up, and it'll actually be hardwired into this box. We will put an outlet down below where the, uh, down below where this is to run the actual forge blower. But we will make provisions. Now let's see if you guys can even see that. I know the light right behind us, it's kind of goofy. So what we have here, and it all works out quite nicely, we won't be using this at all. This is a primary control for that oil burner. This is, this is a pretty old school burner box. The burner wasn't huge, but it was big enough. This is a nice terminal strip that we can use. We can actually, we can try to run quite a few different things out of this box. And uh, pretty much anything I think that we can uh, run off of relays, contactors, things like that, we will run out of this box. Oh, let's see. So if I so get these wires all out of here, because they're kind of in the way. So basically what I can do with this is... So these terminal strips are very handy. You have some in here where they're bridged already. There's a couple right there. I know you guys can't really see that. But I could come in one end with my line one, line two, so my hot and my neutral, and I could jump off of those and daisy chain to different ones so I could run different things if I so chose. I could run safeties through here. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to uh, maybe have some kind of a high limit set up so that if that so pretty much if that hood, that exhaust pipe got too hot, we could set up a high limit so that it would uh, kick the forge blower off before there was any issues, before we had a fire or something like that. You can get adjustable high limits and a little snap disc that you can put right on a pipe. And that's probably what we'll end up doing. They're pretty cheap. I'd probably end up taking probably end up taking some out of a unit anyway at some point in time. I could just as easily put a switch in and do it that way. But I work in the mechanical fields. That's stuff's what I do, so of course I've got to give it a touch of overcomplicated. Certainly don't need anything like this. I have a few jobs for this thing 
in mind, this is a big enough box I can run probably six or seven items out of it. I think we're going to mount this fella right here. Now, I don't want to mount it so high that I can't get to it easily. After all, I'm going to have to wire and things like that in here. Of course, that board's a little bowed. We'll move up between two of them here. Okay, get her level. Hate control boxes that are out of level. Right on the money. Until we put another screw in it, that is. Cool. No. I didn't think so, buddy. Frog's talking to me. You guys may not be able to hear it, but... You know, it could be Thomas. Maybe I'm spending way too much time out in this barn alone. Well, Thomas, you're still here. It looks like you're having a good day. No one disturb our buddy the tree frog here. The bench is filling up quick. That's all right. It'll get cleaned off quick too next year maybe. So one of the things that I am extremely, extremely fussy about is wiring and electrical work. I just very picky on it. And I like my wiring clean. You guys may not think it looking around at the extension cords and stuff hanging around, but that's out of necessity more than uh, more than anything. So we're just going to run. I have some uh, 143 MC cable that we are going to run the the little forge blower and the exhaust fan off of, and I'm running three wire because I'm going to, uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing a little overkill on how I'm doing this. Actually quite a bit of overkill. Never forget your anti-shorts when you're working with MC cable and BX cable. Very important. You get a sharp metal edge right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. You get a sharp metal edge there that can cut right into that wire and ruin your whole day. That'd be no good. <coughs> Sorry, my allergies are kicking my ass tonight. So I'm having trouble talking and breathing and all that. Now I don't like to run, especially around workbench areas, I don't like to run just Romex wire. Um, you know, you got tools kind of going around, stuff like that. In a blacksmith shop, you might have the errant spark here and there. Mice really don't get in and chew on uh, wires like this too much. honestly in most places it is code to have metal clad wire or wire in conduit if indeed it is going to be exposed. Now, I didn't run wires inside the walls here because this is a barn. Rodents do like to live in barn walls and I don't need anything gnawing on wires on me. I'm also a firm believer in running my wires long because to me I'd rather have 12 inches too much on there than be a half an inch shy. So this wire right here this wire right here is going to run over to the uh, area where the forge hood and the exhaust blower are. And we'll just kind of do this up nice real quick. Now I'm of the firm belief that you can't be too anal about your wiring because the neater and cleaner you do this stuff 
to me just the safer it is. Not to mention if you do have to have it inspected, the inspector is going to come in and look and say, geez, that's really clean. Instead of, you don't want somebody, you want somebody to come in and say, gee, who did that? You don't want somebody to come in and say, geez, who the hell did that? You know, just, uh, that's the way it goes. I like to do nice clean bends in it too, because that way, you know, buildings do shift. That is not uncommon knowledge. And you have some people who will put wires in a house, and they'll have the wires so tough, or so taut, that if the wires do any shifting, they actually end up, they'll actually end up uh, cutting the wires on wire staples. And that's not something we're interested in. Not that we have wire staples here, but you know what I'm saying. I really can't get over that this frog is still here. I actually started this video last night and didn't get time to finish it. But that is the way she goes. This is the way she goes. So you can get a tool to cut this uh, MC cable, or BX as a lot of people know it as. But I've always found it's just as quick for me to do it this way. I've never had any problems. I've used the, the Roto Zip tools for them before. It works pretty well. Nice clean, nice clean cuts. But I just trim the stuff up and dress it up that way. With the any shorts in there, it pretty well takes care of it. Very important to always, always use your anti shorts. I can't tell you how many times I go to places to work on equipment and control boxes. It'll be brand new installs and there'll be no anti shorts in them. And it just blows my mind. A little bag of anti shorts, you get like 500 in a bag, maybe cost two or three bucks at the most. And they last you forever if you don't lose the bag like I do every time you uh, do a project. Ah, we have an electrical box. How about that? I guess maybe I ought to get power to it soon. That would be cool. It'd be a lot of fun. Well, Alright folks, that's what we have time for tonight. It was a really short night out here tonight, but... Uh, if I want to get this thing edited and uploaded, I'm going to have to call tonight so I can sleep sometime tonight. But anyway, there is our first, there's our first wire piece of electrical work in the barn. It will probably be piecemeal as we need things done. And uh, so what's going to happen here over the next, like I, I just explained, next couple of weeks we're going to be making some good progress jumps, hopefully. I say hopefully because you just never know what's going to pop up in between. Um... Saturday, I'm hoping Saturday to build that final door, put it on the back. Uh, for those of you wondering why I'm not forging hinges and I'm puttering around on a knife or doing any of this stuff, I'm waiting to get the metal to make the hinges. If I don't, uh, a lot of times if I don't have the material, that's why I'm not working on a particular project at a time. But there's so much other stuff to be done all the time. I never have a moment where I'm not busy with something. There's always something to do here. But uh, that's why you see, that's why kind of why you see the stuff jumping around. I've explained that so many times. I really don't need to explain it, but that's just me. That's just what I do. But um, so anyway, like I said, if you're going to be wiring your stuff, I've seen too many people. There's really not much excuse to put wiring in like a pig. I mean, do it nice, do it clean. You'll be much happier with yourself and your work. 
It'll be a much safer installation if you don't have stuff ripped around all over the place and you don't have wires chafing on boxes, things like that. I can't tell you how many times over the years I've gone to places and seen Romex stuffed into boxes without even a box connector. I'm talking metal boxes. So it's stuff like that. It, it blows my mind how a 15 cent part somebody doesn't take the time to do. Electrical work, it, there's nothing really hard about it. It can be monotonous. I enjoy wiring buildings up. That's where I started in the trades. I did it for a long time. And uh, I tell you what, I like it clean. I like it to look good. I want somebody to walk in and say, hey, that's a really not, nice job. Not somebody to walk in, geez, who put this piece of shit in here? You know, I can't believe this place hasn't burnt to the ground. And like I've mentioned before, we're not going inside any stud walls with wiring unless we do we're going to have some wiring buried in the ceiling upstairs for lights but that can't be helped we will probably run i'll probably end up running mc cable up there as well i'm not sure yet i could safely run romex buried in walls that's what it's designed for but i really really like i just really like the uh the protection you get with mc cables bx cables pretty much the same thing but um, for one, the uh, the metal clad on it acts like a separate ground, so it's really nice. If you're running metal boxes, everything's going to be grounded. If you uh, if you tied everything in properly, that is. Now here's something to think about. A couple things with BX cable. You have different types of box connectors you can use. A lot of people like to use the uh, the snap-in ones nowadays. And I like those too for certain applications, but if you're going to rely, and it's really not proper, but it is handy, you can't, having things well grounded, it's so important nowadays. If you, if you go to a place where they don't have good grounds and say something shorts out, that damn thing's not always going to trip out. You, you go into a lot of old houses where they just ran a neutral and a hot to everything, nothing's grounded out, and you'll try to get a breaker to trip so you can find a circuit you can't get the damn thing to trip you can short it out and it doesn't trip that could be dangerous so it's things like that grounds are very important neutrals are very important the only reason I'm sharing a neutral between the two motors is there's such low amp draw I'm not too worried about it that little forge blower draws less than two amps the uh, the forge the exhaust fan on the forge that draws 5.9 amps so we're well under the uh, 15 amp threshold of 14 wire but um, so anyway I guess I'm just yakking here so we will explain a lot more about electrical work as we go we'll be getting back into something that I can actually do a lot of explanation on and so anyway have a good night everybody I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the next one